Nerds, I'm Tom. Today I'm going to talk to you all about two new expansions for Railways of the World. That is Railways of Australia and Railways of Sweden. I know in this picture right here I'm talking about clearly uh, Railways of Portugal, but that's not what I'm talking about right now. First things first, you're probably familiar with this uh, since this is a Kickstarter preview. A lot of what you're going to see here is prototype. Now not everything, obviously, since this is an expansion, all the base game stuff I have isn't a prototype, but you know what I'm talking about. Minor things can change, uh, you know, not everything is necessarily final, blah, 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 blah. You know the drill. I'm going to talk about Railways of Australia first. It's a bit of a bigger map. Uh, it adds more mechanics and stuff. Also, I took Railways of Australia to a brewery and played it with a bunch of friends. Uh, a lot of people who hadn't played any Railways of the World map before. So a lot of these pictures uh, might not have come out so great. The lighting wasn't super great there. But what's good to note is that a lot of people, you know, played it for the first time and they had a great time with this expansion. Also, it's probably also important to note that I am a super huge fan of Railways of the World. I love the base game. I think it's my favorite train game out there. Uh, I have every single map, every single expansion, and Railways of Australia might be my new favorite map. And I know that people say that kind of thing a lot. You know, whatever's new is always the best. You know, they, it's like Barney Stinson's number one rule. New is always better. But this map really does add a lot of new things. So it's a huge map, kind of like the regular uh, railways of the eastern US, uh, but it is cut into different sections. So it's actually more accessible to be played with a smaller number of players. It goes up to six, but you can play it with two players and you're only using like the east side. If you're playing with like three and four, you're using the, the east side in the middle. And then when you play with five or six, you use the whole the whole map. But those lines are also included in the gameplay. So you can't just build from one section to the other section just willy-nilly. You can't cross those borders, those little white lines, without building into a city. You have to actually, there's cities that are like right on the line. So you have to build into that city and then come out of that city you know, from one side to the other if you want to cross that line. So it does make those sort of like choke points. They're more valuable for people who are trying to, you know, build a cross country type of thing. There are also these town areas out there that aren't cities now, but you could turn them into cities. You could turn them into uh, those gray cities and then later on you can urbanize them and add more cubes to them. But that's just cool that the map kind of grows with you. Uh, there are certain cards that uh, allow you to do that. Speaking of new cards, there is a new card type that is one that will go into your hand, but then once you play it, it bounces right back into the card row. So this card's gonna be bouncing back and forth between players and the row all the time. And I, I mean, I guess you could purchase it and kind of hold it in your hand and sit on it so other players don't get it. But then again, you kind of like wasted your money to do that. So there's a little bit of strategy there, but I think it's really cool that there's that new type. One of the new cards of that type is one that allows you to build across the water, sort of like a fairy line thing, uh, to get to that little island that's in the uh, southeast of the map. This expansion also reintroduces switch tracks into the game. Switch tracks was originally in another expansion uh, a long time ago, but basically it allows you to build off of like the center of a track. You know how you normally have to build from city A to city B, right? Well, you can actually build straight off of like the tracks that are in between city A and city B and it turns into like a three-pointer track. And before you just kind of placed your little switch track marker on the track and then the, the trail came out from there. But now you actually have tiles that you can place that are specifically for switch tracks. So you know, it looks a lot nicer and cleaner. All right, so now on to the Railways of Sweden map. This is a bit of a smaller map meant generally for lower player counts, kind of like the Railways of Mexico or Railways of Nippon or even Portugal to an extent. Like a lot of those maps are a little bit smaller meant for lower player counts, but still added uh, different mechanics. And this one also does too. This one adds, it has snow track tiles and a lot of mountainous regions. So it's gonna be really expensive and really hard to fight up, especially up in the north to build all those tracks. But there's also that fairy line Similar to the thing in Australia, there are areas where you're going to build across the water, but in order to do that, you need a card. Uh, this is a little bit different, though, from Railways of Australia. There, the card was would bounce back and forth constantly. You know, every time a player picked it up and then played it, it goes back into the line. Well, here, there are only a couple cards. Now, granted, a lot of them are starter cards that stay out there, and then there's one that lets you build, I think, three tracks in a row. But once you use those cards, you lose those cards, and those are the only way to build. So it creates an awful lot of demand in that one area, makes it really hard 
to build there. The second a card comes out there, you're probably going to want to bid an awful lot for turn order to go first to, to pick up those cards, especially if you're trying to complete major lines or, or you know get deliveries down there or whatever. I really like the Railways of Sweden map. I like the idea of having smaller maps like the Mexico and the Portugal one and stuff uh, for smaller player counts and also fits nicer on your table, you know, if, especially on my game topper table, link in the description box down below for that. You know, I don't always have the time to play Railways of the World with five or six people or the table space, you know, like it was just lucky that that brewery even had big enough tables for me to bring the map there. So, you know, it's a really good option to always have a, a smaller spare map. I do personally enjoy the Australia one a little bit better. I mean, I'm definitely going to get both because like I said, I love this game and I'm going to have every single map for it, but I am recommending, like I recommend that you get both, but if you're saying, well, Tom, I only have money to get one, um, I'm guessing you're going to recommend the Australia map. Not necessarily because it depends on your play style. If you're not going to play with a larger player group, if you want a smaller map, uh, that's it's going to be more tighter, right, in terms of money, right, with all those mountains you got to go through. You know, you don't want to bring up this big, huge map that's going to take up the whole table and it's a big, grandiose, uh, that's, where it was a Sweden map is going to play even a little bit quicker. So it's really up to your play style if you're only going to get one. But again, I really think you should get both. I absolutely love Railways of the World. It's my number one train game. You know, it's really economic. I love how you start with zero dollars. Everybody starts with zero dollars. You have to take out debt to get any amount of money to do anything. So you you want to have the smallest amount of debt. I love the pick up and deliver aspect with the cubes. Uh, you can even use other players uh, train routes. There's a lot and the component quality is great in this game and it's beautiful. There's a lot to love about Railways of the World and I really enjoy these two new maps. I highly recommend you check it out. If you're watching this on Kickstarter you know what to do but if you're watching this on YouTube we're going to put a link to the Kickstarter campaign in the description box down below. There's also going to be a link down there for game toppers. Either way, you should definitely subscribe to our channel so you'll never be bored.